Right, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Akeem and welcome to today's vlog. Continuing with all my top prospects headed towards the 2014 NFL Draft. Today, I need to give you my top five running backs. Now, I must admit, I'm going to predict something already this season for this year's NFL Draft. I think it's going to be just like last season when it comes to the running backs. A running back will not be selected until the second round of this year's draft. Because it's not that because there's not that many teams in this league who desperately need a running back in the first round. So I predict that a running back will be selected for the first time in the second round and not the first round. But I still think I have a pretty good group for you guys at running back. Starting at number five, I'm going to go with LSU's Jeremy Hill. Now, I do like this kid a lot. He's a good downhill runner. He can break you some tackles, and I kind of like his uh, his way, his running style. He can lower his shoulder and play some rough football. Another thing that I do like about him is that he finishes his runs. And he showed that well against Iowa in that um, Outback Bowl this past season. He had 216 yards and two rushes, two rushing touchdowns. Now, a couple weaknesses that I do don't like about his game is that he sometimes runs high, which exposes himself to to, to receive big open shots, which is not good. Also, he's not really of good a of a pass blocker. He's a little bit somewhat lazy in pass blocking. He needs to improve at that in the National Football League in order for him to hope that he plays as a starting running back and also he has some off the field issues and just re in this past year 2013 he pled guilty to battery charges while he was already on probation um, um, back from a uh, issue back in 2010 and those are not good news so hopefully some teams would probably give him a chance but I don't know they're, they're, those are that is a major concern dealing with off the field issues and hopefully he will mature in the National Football League. At number four, I'm going to go with Bishop Shanky out of Washington. I do like this kid a lot. He is very talented. He catched the ball outside the backfield, had over 700 yards receiving these past two years, and well over 1,400 yards, actually 1,800 yards this past season in college football. And he had to, he had a lot of touches, which shows he is a very good, durable back. Now, I'm going to have to use that as a weakness as well. And I have to say, due to the, the lack of disappointing performance from quarterback Keith Price, my, um, Bishop Shanky had to touch the ball a lot, so some teams could be concerned in the National Football League his durability, how much left, how much is left on those tires with his legs. Also, another weakness that he has, he sometimes exposes the ball while running. He sometimes swings his arms, exposing the ball, which gives defenders opportunities to swipe the ball away and strip it and cause fumbles. That it could be a good big concern. But I still think I still think he's a great running back. He reminds me a lot of Giovanni Bernard. He possesses good quickness. Good speed. I, he runs a 4.540 at 203 pounds. I like this kid. Little slim, but it's still all good. A good size at running back at 5'10". At number three, I'm going to have to go with Arizona's Kadeem Carey. He had a breakout season back in 2012. And then in this past year, in 2013, he showed that he is for real. Rushed for over 1,800 yards, 5.4 yards per carry. And the thing I like most about his running style is his determination. He can break some tackles, and he is determined to get that action yards which is a good thing which means we'll have to the um he can give you those tough yardage after contact, which a lot of NFL teams like about running backs. But one thing I do not like about, uh, that I'm concerned about him, is that it's his straight line speed. Meaning, he doesn't really um, squeak past, uh, fly past the defenders, which is a little bit of a concern. But he does hold on to the football well, and he can give you those tough, determined yardage. But sometimes I wish he could just have a good straight line speed where he would just outrun defenders. But at least he holds on to the football, and I have to give him some points at that. At number two, I'm going to have to go with Lachey Seastrunk out of Baylor. Now, unlike Kadeem Carey, I think that Lachey Seastrunk is a more of a home run threat because he has runs with pure speed. 4.4 yards per carry and he reminds me of Jamal Charles. Just about every time he touches the ball, he is a home run threat from scoring a touchdown. He shows a lot of speed, well over 7 yards per carry for these past two seasons for the Baylor Bears. He runs with excellent speed. Couple of concerns for me. Now, in the Big 12 Conference, it's not really known for their defense. The Big 12 is known more for their offense, meaning their defense is kind of weak, and that's part of the reason why Lachey Seastrunk has such a couple of great thousand-yard seasons these past couple of years. And also, he wasn't used too much as a receiving running back. He only had nine receptions over these past two seasons, which is not good, but I think that some NFL teams will still give him a shot. I had to put him at number two because of his speed. And also, he's also more of a... He 
he kind of runs too much east coast, west, east, east and west side when he needs to go north and south a lot more in the National Football League. He's going to have a harder time going around these fast corners in the, in the NFL. But it's, I think he's going to overcome that and become more of a north-south of running back with the right team and the right coach to tell him he needs to go north-south. He, he, he has some good shake moves. He could beat you one-on-one. -on -one. He could beat you with speed. But he needs to not go run, sitting on east and west so much. He needs to go north and south a little bit more often. Last but definitely not least, my number one running back, I'm going to go with Trey Mason out of Auburn. Now, just recently he decided to sign up with an agent, so that means he's going to declare himself for the National Football League. Now, this guy is a tough kid. He's a good bruising type running back in my opinion. He runs with great power and I like his legs. He keeps his legs churning. He can give you those tough yardage after contact. Very great strong legs and I do like his running style. He can get low to the ground because he has a, such a high cut frame. He definitely gets low and pounds the rock very, very well. And also, I like his feet. He's very quick with his feet and I do like the fact that he's not much like of a dancer like let's say Seastrong. He is more north and south and that is what the National Football League likes. These teams like they like a running back who can go north and south and that is exactly why Trey Mason is my number one running back he can even catch the ball a couple times outside the backfield 163 yards receiving this past year not great but still good enough to know hey he can catch the ball outside the backfield and I think this is a tough kid and he should be the number one running back selected in the, uh, within the second round in this year's draft now I have a couple honorable mentions I need to talk about my first honorable mention the Anthony Thomas out of Oregon now, if this kid was 20 pounds heavier, he weighs 169 pounds, if he was at least 189, 190, he would definitely be my number one running back because he's a great return specialist, and I know some team is definitely going to pick him up and use him as a return specialist, but one at 169 pounds, that is a major concern. Teams are worried about in the National Football League, they're worried about his durability, if he could take the hit, and that is a major concern. That's why he's not within my top five, as well as other scouts of top five running backs coming to this year's draft. Couple other running backs, Andre Williams out of Boston College, rushed for over 2,400 yards this past season. This year's dope Dope Walker Award winner, given to the nation's top premier running back. He had a great year, a Heisman finalist, a big back out of Ohio State, Carlos Hyde, 242 pounds, a big back, a definitely a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers, even though the Pittsburgh Steelers is not going to use him. Um, they, don't, they don't need to pick him up because they already have... Uh, Le'Veon Bell, but he's a big Le'Veon Bell bruising type, and I know a good team's going to pick him up. I think he's a good back. Out of the FCS, Terrence West out of Towson. He had a spectacular year this past season. 2,400 yards rushing and 41 touchdowns. Now, I'm a little bit shocked that he came out his junior season, even though, like I said, I don't really think a running back will be picked within the first round, so I'm a little bit concerned. Yes, he is within my top 10 running backs. I have him at number 9, but I I don't really think that he should have came out this year due to the fact that the, the stock at running back is not so well as what meaning when a running back will be Pick. He will be picked in the later rounds. He's a great running back. Now, my sleeper this season, I'm going to have to go with Wisconsin's James White. Now, throughout his career, he was completely overlooked, especially dealing with Monty Ball, who was a Dope Walk Award winner, All-American. He's now with the Denver Broncos. And even in this past season with Melvin Gordon, he was the leaning back for the Badgers. But James White still had a couple thousand yard seasons, his freshman season. And in this past year, he had over 1,400 yards of rushing this past year. And and I think he could be a good dual running back, meaning a, a, a part, one half of a tandem. And that's what a lot of teams are starting to do in the National Football League, becoming more tandem running backs where they will flip running backs. And he will give you some great fresh legs for any team in the National Football League. He weighs 190 pounds. Maybe he needs a bulk, 95 pounds. Maybe he needs a bulk up just a little bit. But he still runs a 4 5 40, And I'm looking forward to see how he performs in this year's scout combine. I think he could be a good sleeper for any team in the National Football League. Now, the next time I'm going to catch you guys is on Friday where I will give you my top three, not my top five, my top three fullbacks. And I'll catch you guys then. Thank you for watching today's blog from Pro Football Exclusive. I'm your man, Keen McCall. Be easy.